Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the commencement ceremony for the class of 2022. On behalf of the Brothers of the Sacred Heart, the faculty and staff of Bishop Girton High School, myself, Christopher Millett, and my co-senior class advisor, Amy Betancourt, I proudly present to you the class of 2022.
please remain standing for our national anthem and invocation. The Bishop Garton Concert Band will now perform our national anthem. To offer the invocation, I now welcome Ms. Molly Pinsano. Good afternoon. Let us bow our heads in prayer. God of joy and hope, we thank you for this time of graduation. Your spirit of wisdom has empowered our hard work and discipline in such a way that our hunger for learning has been nourished with knowledge, discovery, creativity, and determination. As we prepare to walk across the stage to receive our diplomas, let us walk in prayerful gratitude for the many blessings that have made this moment real and filled with great potential. In gratitude, we pray for our families and the many who have sacrificed and worked to see us to this hopeful moment. In gratitude, we pray for the teachers, staff members, and administrators who have challenged, cared, and crafted us along this academic journey. In gratitude, we pray for fellow students who have taught us more about friendship, collaboration, and sharing. On this day of Pentecost, we ask the Holy Spirit to come upon all gathered here. Grant us the grace to be present to this moment, putting aside all outside distractions and cherish these moments of celebration. And may this celebration be a reflection of the blessings that we find in knowing and loving you, for this is the day that you have made. We are glad and rejoice in it. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Thank you, Ms. Pinsano. Please be seated. Good afternoon and welcome to our commencement. My name is Amal Prasad and it is my privilege to serve as the master of ceremony throughout the commencement exercises. Ms. Tamara Golosarski, salutatorian of the class of 2022, will now come to the podium. Welcome everyone, students, parents, and faculty to the graduation of the class of 2022. It is my pleasure to commence this ceremony, especially with the first and by default the best speech I have ever written. 
For that, I have to thank Dean Forrester for his gracious input, as well as Sam, Mr. Dunlays, and Amals, Mr. Prasad's scrutinization of my speech. Don't worry, Mr. Howe, they made sure you made it in here. Your graduation speech streak will not be ruined, I promise. In addition, I have to thank my parents. From coming to this country without knowing English, with two suitcases and five dollars in your pockets, you both worked extremely hard to provide me the best education that you possibly could. Without your continued sacrifices, efforts, and without your example, I would have never been able to stand before all of you today and deliver this speech. Thank you, Mama and Papa. I love you beyond words the English and Russian language can express. Lastly, I have to earnestly thank each one of my classmates, not only for your hard work these past four years, but also for the valuable lessons I have learned from each one of you. For instance, Thomas Bond, our very own Mr. BG, enlightened me the other day on the contradictory flaws of the word presently. He pointed out to me that the meaning of presently is not unanimously agreed upon. Does it mean now, as in the present, or in the near future? Who knows? So thank you, Thomas, for without you, I would have not begun to think differently about the word presently. But in all seriousness, it's anecdotes like this that define our class. Like Thomas, each person in this class has contributed a beautiful and special part of themselves to this school in their own and unique way. Our grade has always been one to explore multifarious passions ranging from the pursuit of academics to athletics, music, theater, and so on. These passions drove us to challenge ourselves in order to grow into the people that we are today. I have so many talented peers sitting in front of me that it is impossible for me to recognize all of you in the way that each one of you deserve. I am confident that each and every one of you will continue to uphold and pursue the passion that you have discovered in high school, and maybe even discover new ones on the next chapter of our educational journey, college. All of you make me proud to call you my fellow peers, classmates, and truly my friends. However, we did not discover these idiosyncratic passions on our own. They were cultivated and nurtured by the spectacular faculty of Bishop Gurney. Within our community, teachers have been the backbone of the student body. Without their love for what they do, our class would not have been made up of this many enthusiastic young adults that are sitting before all of you today. Without the rigor of their coursework, we would have not been faced with unique challenges and learned how to overcome them. And without their continued support, we may have never discovered or pursued our love of learning. I speak for the entire class when I say we are so grateful that each, that everyone has had teachers that have made our formation at Bishop Girton an unforgettable journey. For me, there are certain teachers that have left a very meaningful impact on me and my future. Firstly, I have to thank Dr. Paulo. Dr. Paulo, thank you for your stress-relieving stuffed animals, explanations on how the lysosome is the best organelle, and collective commiserations about failed spinach labs. RIP spinach, you supplied your chlorophyll till the very end. Thank you for taking the time and effort that you wholeheartedly put into teaching in order to ignite an explorative desire to learn about all of the beautiful complexities of life within our bio class. You are a priceless member of the Bishop Gurton community. Next, I have to thank Mr. Howe. See, I told you you made it in here. 
I have to thank you for two things. Number one, allowing me to realize I have a complete aversion to calculus. And number two, allowing me to realize I have an absolute love for statistics. Thank you for your constant attentiveness, dedication, and patience, not only with your students, but also the continually challenging math problems that you have to contend with every day in order to prepare my classmates to sell their souls to College Board for three hours every May. Thank you for being part of this Bishop Girton community, for it would have definitely not been the same without your sarcastic, witty presence. And thank you, Mr. Strunitsky. Your chem class sophomore year will remain a memory that I will forever cherish in my heart, not only due to my wonderful classmates, but also due to your unyielding care for us before and after the pandemic. I will never forget the beginning of each class when you asked us to name something that we were grateful for in the midst of the murmurs and groans of stress-filled conversations from your students including me. Well, today, Mr. Strunisti, I can say this. I am grateful for you. I am grateful for everything that you have done for me, my classmates, and this school. Sincerely, from the bottom of my heart, thank you. And thank you to all of you, my classmates, for the community that we have built through the pursuit of our own passions and those who have nurtured them. You are the strongest, most resilient family that I have ever been a part of. So strong, in fact, that not even a global pandemic was able to shake our very resolve. And that is a testament to the very will and grit of every single person sitting in front of me. I thank you deeply. Looking back on everything that we have been through together, it feels as though high school has gone by in a blink of an eye. Four years ago, our freshman year marked a transition from the sheltered existence of middle school to the completely new and unexpected terrain of high school. At that time, BG felt incredibly intimidating and overwhelming. I remember freshman orientation and the whirlwind of activity around me. Every freshman rushing around, having the same thoughts. Who should I sit with? How am I going to find my classes? Who is that scary bald man that everyone keeps talking about? In time, we all found our people to eat with, learn to navigate the halls of the building, and discovered that that scary bald man wasn't so bad after all looking at you, Mr. Miller. And now, here we are, senior year. When seniors before us told us, underclassmen, how fast high school goes by, I never believed them. Yeah, right, I always thought. How can school go by fast? I still have a ton of tests to study for. But even with my skepticism, I, I have to admit, they were right. Just yesterday was our first day of senior year. Just yesterday, we submitted our last college applications. And just yesterday, we finally committed to our new educational home for the next four years. It has been my absolute honor to get to know each one of you these past four years. Just as all of you have impacted me with your kind gestures, thoughtfulness, and deep care, I know that the future of our world is in good hands. If there is one thing that all of you should take away from this speech, let it be this. Cherish your communities that you are a part of. Before you know it, they will be nudging you towards your next adventure, not only urging you to carry on the memories of the past in your heart, but also to make room for new ones. Thank you. Thank you, Tamara. We will now confer the diplomas. Mr. Jason Strinisti, principal, will now come to the podium.
Good afternoon, Cardinals. To the faculty, staff, and administration of Bishop Girton High School, to parents, friends, relatives, and guests joining us from here and from around the world, and most importantly to the class of 2022, welcome. The faculty of Bishop Girton has certified that in accordance with the laws of the state of New Hampshire, having completed the prescribed academic course of studies of Bishop Girton High School, the students whose names will be read in just a few minutes have met the requirements of the Brothers of the Sacred Heart for graduation from Bishop Girton High School. The story of the class of 2022, though, goes well beyond credits and transcripts. We all know that proverb, may you live in interesting times. Some say that was originally meant as an insult. But in any event, the class of 2022 has had an interesting path, a generationally defining path, I think, through high school. After a relatively normal freshman year, a time when you got to know Bishop Girton as it was, you were plunged into the pandemic on that fateful day in March when we closed down for two days, then two weeks, then two months, with impacts lasting ultimately over two years. The rest of your sophomore year and most of your junior year were about adjusting, pivoting, being flexible, masking, cohorting, distancing, isolating, testing, quarantining, never quite knowing if you'd be part of an event or a class or a game. Constant uncertainty. And this could have been crippling to you, but there were also lots of opportunities to see you step up as resilient individuals and as a resilient class to make the most of your opportunities despite these obstacles. So coming into this year, your class was the only one to have experienced a full uninterrupted school year at BG. The class behind you had their freshman year cut short. The sophomores only knew masks and lunch deliveries on a cart. As for the freshmen, quite a few of them hadn't really set foot in a classroom in about 15 months. And so that meant it was up to you to show the rest of the school what it meant to be a cardinal. And I asked you when you got your junior rings to think of yourselves as custodians of our culture. And as a class, you rose to this. From the many achievements of your class, in the classroom, on the field, on the stage, to the simple act of getting involved, the class of 2022 has led the way this year. I can think of a lot of examples of this. The return of the nest to the filled stands at Stellos for football games in the fall. Engagement in classroom debates. Mentoring younger students. The packed houses at sporting events this winter. Service projects. The standing room only crowds at the musical. The sea of yellow at accepted student night welcoming the new class. You truly reconnected our school community in a positive way. And further, as a class, you exemplified the sort of behavior and role models that younger students needed. You were quiet leaders. You dealt with disappointments and frustration in a mature way. You rolled with the punches when we did need to make adjustments or things went differently from plans. In many ways, small and large, members of your class did the right things, even when that was hard to do. COVID was a bump, probably the most significant disruption in the history of Bishop Garton. And there was always that question of how we would bounce back. Your class answered that question. And the culture that came back this year is a lasting legacy for your class. Sure, there's plenty of room for that culture to grow, and the classes of 23 and 24 are going to have to step up and do a lot of work. But it all started with your response, and you set the bar very high from that, for them. And the impact of that will outlive your class here at Bishop Garton. So now what? As you take your talents and experiences to begin your next chapter, I'd like to suggest that the most important thing that you can walk away with today is an appreciation that you can always affect the situation that you find yourself in. On Friday, Bishop, Gerton, uh, Bishop Christian excuse me, referred to this as making your dent. Paul challenged you to seize opportunities, and rather than waiting for God to send a miracle, to realize that you might be the miracle. I'd like to talk about the same thing, basically, but I'm going to call it a mindset of optimism. If you scroll your feed right now, you can find a lot of reasons to be cynical. The pandemic took a lot out of us. 
We didn't exactly always distinguish ourselves and how we responded to it in a unified way as a world, nation, or even local communities. We watched a lot of big name leaders and institutions that we trusted stumble around and wait for somebody to come with a solution. We watched fingers get pointed. And beyond that, we can also find many other reasons to be fearful. Political division, inflation, shootings and violence, the war in Europe, riots, protests, upheaval, heaval, the loss of faith, damaged trust in government, in institutions, anything associated with TikTok can't be good. Deep questions about social media and the free flow of ideas, mental health crises, not to mention international hackers, who I hear can be quite problematic. All of these factor into our outlook and grind away at our spirits. But despite these things, and because of these things, I encourage you to adopt a spirit of optimism. Those of you who had me in class know all about variables, but the reality is that you are the variable that you can control in your environment. In any dark time, no matter what obstacles you are up against, there will be opportunities, large and small, to make an impact on your surroundings, to build an oasis of sanity and kindness. Maybe you do so by applying your talents to a scientific or technical solution, or by running for office or taking on a leadership role. Maybe you do it by serving those around you, helping them to stay calm and focused in the face of fear. Make no mistake, the members of this class will find yourselves in leadership roles in the future, leading in organizations, families, and communities. And so at the end of the day, will events control you? Will you look for somebody else to show up with the answers, or will you take ownership, and will you lead? If you believe that you are able to make some difference, any difference, and that you are on this earth for a reason, and you act accordingly, I would argue that you are allowing yourself to be driven by optimism, and that's what the world needs. And I think that's the only valid choice in the face of these times. But the upside is huge. Think about the last pandemic generation. I've pointed this out a few times, so those of you who've heard it, I apologize. The students who graduated around 1918 had a lot to be afraid of, too. The pandemic would still take a few years to end. A world war had just ended. The 1930s would be a time of depression, and war would follow that. But that generation rose to the occasion, and over the course of their lives, they saw us make huge leaps, from the early car to putting a person on the moon, from the telegraph to the cell phone, newspapers to the internet, from a harshly unequal to society to one that provides more equal, though still evolving through your actions, but clearly more equal opportunities for all, and more respect for the dignity of all. And Bishop George Girton was a part of this himself. His church, which he led through the pandemic, did not sit on the sidelines, but engaged in improving the lives of those in the state of New Hampshire. So optimism is our very name as a school. If the difference makers of those times had only focused on the negative and been paralyzed with fear and cynicism and indecision, if they'd given the floor to the critics and the naysayers who must have existed them too, where would we be today? But they acted out of optimism for a better future and they built it. So stay optimistic and let that mindset drive you, as you will likely continue to live in interesting times, times that will call you to leave your mark on the world. Which gets me to your final homework assignment. One of the great honors of my role is the opportunity to give each class its first and also its final Bishop Garden homework assignment. A couple months ago, we gave the freshmen their first assignment to represent Bishop Garden with pride and gratitude, and that still holds. But your final assignment is rooted in our faith tradition, which I think is a statement of pure optimism. The mission, the mission statement of Bishop Girton concludes, we strive to form tolerant, just, and involved men and women of faith who accept the task of building the kingdom of God and of transforming for the better the world in which they live. Today, the responsibility for Bishop Girton's mission shifts fully to your capable shoulders. This mission to transform your world is in fact your last homework assignment here, and it is a lifelong assignment. To be transformed, the world needs competent, principled, morally centered, faith-filled people, optimistic people, and the world needs these individuals giving of themselves fully. The world needs you, and you are up to the challenge. So that's your assignment, change the world. I know that I speak for all of your teachers and wishing you the best, 
and I'm looking forward to seeing the impact that you will make. You will be missed by all of us. Here, you are known, valued, and treasured. You are loved, and you will always have a home. Congratulations to the class of 2022. Diplomas will now be conferred. Mrs. Linda Broder, President, will present the diplomas as Mr. Daniel Gorell, Vice Principal, reads the names. We request that you hold your applause and cheering until all diplomas have been conferred so that each student may receive proper recognition. Thank you to all of our guests for your assistance in honoring our graduates in a dignified way that acknowledges the achievement and commitment, the whole person formation, and the optimism represented by a Bishop Gurdon diploma. Mr. Gurrell. Gabriella Amuni Angelis, Inouac Meb University. Molly Elizabeth Orell, the University of Art and Design at New England College. Cameron Jared Avery, St. Francis, Uni Francis Xavier University. Abigail Marie Boschman, Suffolk University. Cassidy Celia Beek, Suffolk University. Pedro Jose Benitez, Riviere University. Isaiah Tucson Berry, Riviere University. Ryan Leo Betancourt, Quinnipiac University. Rizvan Buttrai, San Jose State University. Helena Monserrate Bickrest, Ivy Tech Community College. Alice Sarah Blow, Fordham University. Thomas Christopher Bond, Northeastern University. Riley Jane Bouvier, Stanford University. Madeline Elizabeth Bowen, Eastern Connecticut State University. John Paul Brennan IV, George Mason University. Parker Nicholas Breton, Lincoln Technical Institute. Elizabeth Mikhail Broderick, Boston College. Elizabeth Catherine Butler, Sacred Heart University. Caroline Elizabeth Kearns, Northeastern University. Catherine Grace Campbell, University of Virginia. Abby Lynn Cannon, Keyser University.
Kayla Alexis Carlton, American University. Teague Everett Carpenter, Palm Beach Atlantic University. Jack Ryan Casey, Salve Regina University. Liam James Chapman, Baylor University. Philip Chan Chow, University of Vermont. Tristan Paul William Connolly, North Bennett Street School. Bryn Adele Cooley, University of Massachusetts Lowell. Emma Nicole Correa, Endicott College. Ashton Mario Correa, University of Massachusetts Lowell. Natalie Karen Kutu, University of Oregon. Charlotte Elizabeth Crane, Stony Brook University. Jamal Joseph Creighton, University of Tampa. Maria Nancy Krivak, University of Rhode Island. Nicholas Thomas Dahl, Trinity College. Emma Rose Dargan, Suffolk University. Megan Emily Davey, Boston University. Joseph Michael Duane, Purdue University. Fiona Claire Doherty, College of the Holy Cross. Emily Rose Dowling, Marist College. Eileen Morgan Doyle, University of New Hampshire. Samuel James Dupo, University of New Hampshire. Alexander A. Dunsmore, St. Anselm College. Marissa Lynn Dwelly, V. Ohio State University. John Michael Ferris, Merrimack College. Colin Tyler Ferguson, Iona College. Mary Kate Finn, University of Massachusetts Lowell. Margaret Eileen Fitzgerald, Suffolk University. Jackson Calvin Flanders, undecided. Dylan Patrick Foley, University of Massachusetts Lowell. Nathaniel Stephen Fundakowski, University of Massachusetts Lowell. Julia Grace Foster, High Point University. Grace Elizabeth Fusco, University of New Hampshire. Julia Virginia Gadbois, Eckerd College. Eliza May Guillen, Emmanuel College. Michael Thomas Gelati, Keene State College. Alexander Theodore Gerada, Christendom College. Adam Lafia Ianu, 
Pennsylvania State University. Madison Amory Goldstein, Lehigh University. Kylie Jade Garrett, Riviere University. Matthew Kevin Ha, University of Massachusetts Lowell. Alexandra Elizabeth Harris, Stetson University. Tori Jean Hart, Bryant University. Maxwell Joseph Hartsock, Flagler College. Johanna Rose Henderson, Colby Sawyer College. Paul Thomas Henderson, Western New England University. Catherine Elsa Hinza, University College Dublin. Evie Rose Holt, Emmanuel College. Erin Elizabeth Cooper, Fairfield University. Sarah Eugene Hotz, University of New Hampshire. Natalie Annika Huth, Suffolk University. Mackenzie Virginia Husson, Curry College. Cameron Rose Iaquinta, Gettysburg College. Mia Joan Januario, Connecticut College. Dennis John Jelly, Bryant University. Brian Edward Jenkins, Kent's Hill School for Hockey. Julia Evelyn Johnson, Stonehill College. Ryan Paul Jolliker, Riviere University. Charles Frederick Junod V, Coastal Carolina University. Michelle Lynn Capala, Quinnipiac University. Christopher David Kenosian, undecided. Matthew Peter King, Stonehill College. Brooke Ann King Hill, Emerson College. Kaylee Adriana Costco, Bentley University. Samuel William Kuchalakis, University of New Hampshire. Zachary William Kuchalakis, Virginia Polytechnic Institute. Luke Paul Korkalakis, Sacred Heart University. Brendan Kenneth Lachance, Stonehill College. Morgan Olivia Lax, Johnson and Wales University. Kyle Patrick Levine, Austin P State University. Christopher John Lavasser, University of Connecticut. Ruaja Rosetta Lee, Brandeis University. Constantine Carl Liakos, 
Bentley University. Lillian Judith Linane, Elon University. Abigail Ann Linsky, College of the Holy Cross. Nicholas Connor Lofgren, Quinnipiac University. Hannah Carol Lord, Endicott College. Jesse Luck Lu, Rensselaer Polytechnic Institute. Mark Anthony Luca, St. Anselm College. Mitchell Tyler Lynch, Southern New Hampshire University. Connor James McDonald, Sacred Heart University. Jason Allen Mack, Coastal Carolina University. Bryce Burrill McLean, Bentley University. Ella Agnes McLean, the College of William and Mary. Grace Regan Maloney, High Point University. Christopher Nicholas Thomas March, undecided. Alexis Tran Martin, Florida State University. James Craig Martin, Rochester Institute of Technology. Julia Bella Marzellini, St. Anselm College. Bradley John Matarazzo, Sacred Heart University. Colleen Juliet Mon, Northeastern University. Elora Erin Maxwell, Connecticut College. Juliana Mazuera, Emmanuel College. Julie Margaret McLaughlin, Concordia University. Michaela Simone Mendel, University of Mount Olive. Roosevelt Linus Mesidu, Merrimack College. Brandon Paul Metivier, Nicholas College. Jake Ryan Miller, Nashville Spartans, USPHL. Ariana Tappan Modi, Endicott College. Anna Elizabeth Moore, Regis College. Erin Maureen Morris, Randolph-Macon College. Deborah Elizabeth Moyer, St. Leo University. Madeline Ray Moynihan, University of Notre Dame.
Benjamin Edward Mullet, Vermont Technical College. James Joseph Murphy, Bryant University. Emily Grace Neely, Roger Williams University. Madeline Elizabeth Neely, Suffolk College. Erin Christine Nagosian, Merrimack College. Tessa Phelan Knoll, Xavier University. Alexandra May Nutting, Simmons University. Hadara Ann Ochang, Suffolk University. Sean Michael O'Keefe, University of San Diego. Grace Mary O'Malley, Suffolk University. Thomas Frederick O'Neill, Pennsylvania State University. Dalton James Arino, University of New Hampshire. Joshua Caleb Ozeroff, University of Connecticut. Jisong Park, University of Washington. Brandon Joseph Parsley, Plymouth State University. Marissa Lynn Parsley, University of New Hampshire. Hansa Fame, University of Massachusetts Amherst. Kate Nguyen Fame, University of Massachusetts Lowell. Caitlin Elizabeth Poirier, Endicott College. Chiara Lucien Porcelli, Brevard College. Anthony Michael Poto, Baylor University. Duncan Matthew Primus, Marquette University. Michael Timothy Provost, Johnson and Wales University. Delaney Rose Romalo, University of New Hampshire. Ishani Raja Lakshmi Rana, Suffolk University. Marcus Daniel Rantala, Purdue University. Colby John Rathbone, University of Connecticut. Colin James Rathbone, St. Joseph's College of Maine. Stephanie James Reap, Fairfield University. Ainsley Jean Red, University of Rhode Island. McKenna Darlene Rieke, Notre Dame College. Rebecca Dawn Reeves, Texas State University. Christian James Reynolds, Worcester Polytechnic Institute. Trent David Ryder, Wentworth Institute of Technology. 
Maxwell Dennis Reardon, Fitchburg State University. Joshua William Rivers, University of Massachusetts Lowell. Madeline Claire Roma, Northeastern University. Rowan Alexander Romanowskis, University of Alabama. Richard Peter Ronzio, Pennsylvania State University. Nicholas David Root, Northeastern University. Megan Elizabeth Russell, Endicott College. Maeve Amalia Ryan, Northeastern University. Caroline Elizabeth Sander, Trinity College, Dublin. Harriet Gisela Sander, Loyola Marymount University. Joshua Gerard Sanders, Providence College. Nathan Andrew Santum, St. Anselm College. Brittany Syag, Brandeis University. Arshia Singh, George Washington University. Sarah Jewel Sonner, University of New Hampshire. Ava Marlene Soucy, Johnson and Wales University. Austin Mark Spooner, Stonehill College. Caroline Jane Sullivan, University of Kentucky. Victoria Ann Tafaro, Wheaton College. Matthew Reese Tataronis, Bryant University. Ava Marie Terrian, Merrimack College. Cameron Michael Tebow, Florida Gulf Coast University. Maura Scanlon Thompson, Syracuse University. Ella Grace Tomeno, University of Vermont. Colin Joseph Tui, University of South Carolina. Trevor James Turin, University of Rhode Island. Gwen Shepard Valvano, Elon University. Emma Louise Van Wagner, University of Vermont. Ryan John Gordon Wallet, University of Miami. Elizabeth Clara White, University of Hartford. Ruby Jean Wilson, Manhattanville College. Ian James Winarski, Virginia Polytechnic Institute. Chloe May Wong, University of Rhode Island. Daniel Patrick Woodford, Quinnipiac University. Trent Xavier Wright, Sacred Heart University. Kaylin Wu, Bentley University. Robert Joseph Werdeman, Loyola Marymount University. Yeah. 
Sophia Joan Wilson, Connecticut College. Sebastian Edward Zeman, University of New England. Yu Yao Simon Zhang, New York University. Serving as our Master of Ceremonies this evening, Amal Vibhu Prasad, University of Michigan. The salutatorian of the class of 2022, Tamara Golosarski, McGill University. And the valedictorian of the class of 2022, Samuel Robert Dunlay, Tufts University. I now invite Bradley Matarazzo, student body president, and Nicholas Dahl, student body vice president, to the stage for the moving of the tassel from right to left. Ladies and gentlemen, the class of 2022. Good job, everybody. What's up? All right, you still got it, though. I wrote it down exactly right. Is it on the right side? Yeah, uh, yeah you're supposed to go right to left. All right, everyone, please be seated. Congratulations to the class of 2022. We will now honor students who have demonstrated distinguished performance in the classroom here at Bishop Girton High School. Mrs. Poznanski, Director of School Counseling and Admissions, will now come to the podium to recognize our departmental awards, which will be presented by our academic department chairs. I now ask Ms. Beth Raymond, chair of the theology department to come forward. This year's theology award goes to Maeve Ryan. top scholar for our English department will be awarded through with by Miss Bethany Prunier. This year's top honor goes to Emma Van Wagner. For outstanding work in mathematics, Ms. Jane Wogelzinski will be awarding the next award to Sam Dunlay. And Mr. Miller will be awarding the outstanding award for physical science to Sam, don't sit down, 
Sam Dunley. Mr. Miller will now award the Life Science Award for Outstanding Achievement to Tamara Golanzarski. <laughs> Mr. Phillips will come forward for the Top Scholar in Social Studies, and he is awarding this award to Matthew Tataronis. Mr. Daniel Joffrey will be awarding the top language awards. The first is to the top French student in the senior class, Brittany Sayeg. For Outstanding Achievement in Spanish, Madeline Roma. The top award in Latin is awarded to Abigail Linsky. Mrs. Linda Fletcher will now be awarding the Top Arts Award. For Outstanding Achievement in Art, Mrs. Fletcher and the Art Department award this to Molly Arell. <laughs> Mr. Brian Stark will now come to the stage for the Music Award. This award is awarded to Thomas Bond. Yeah. <laughs> Mr. Thomas Indelicato, our chair of the Computer Science, is coming forward to award the Computer Science Award to Christian Reynolds. We ask Mr. John Trishiani, our health and fitness department chair, to come forward. The health and fitness award is awarded to Madeline Bowen. Mr. Dan, Mr. Dan Garrell, our vice principal, will award the AP Capstone Award to Maria Krivak. Congratulations, students, on all your achievement. Mr. Shrinesty will now present our most prestigious class rewards.
The Thomas Sullivan Memorial Scholar Athlete Awards are presented to two seniors who are the commendable and enviable combination of outstanding scholars and fine athletes. The Scholar Athlete Awards are given in memory of Thomas Sullivan. Mr. Ryan Brown, Director of Athletics, will present this year's Thomas Sullivan Scholar Athlete Awards to Ms. Madeline Bowen and Ms. Riley Bouvier. The Larry Elliott Loyalty Award is given in loving memory of Larry Elliott, a friend and benefactor of the school. It is presented to a senior whose dedication and loyalty to Bishop Girton cannot be adequately expressed in words. The senior is chosen by the faculty and staff and exemplifies dedication and loyalty through both curricular and co-curricular activities. This award includes a scholarship. Mr. Doug Elliott, class of 2009 and grandson of Larry Elliott, is here with us today to present the 2022 Larry Elliott Award to Mr. Trent Wright. The All Girton Award is presented in memory of Joseph P. Lebrecht. This award is the most prestigious award offered to a senior and is awarded to a student who enjoys the respect of the entire school community. This senior is an outstanding student who is dedicated to learning, has participated in interscholastic activities, and has given service to the school and community. The student is selected by the faculty and staff. Presented with this award is the Stephen J. Boland Class of 86 Memorial Scholarship granted in his memory. We are proud to present the 2022 All Girton Award to Mr. Nicholas Dahl. Congratulations to all of our award winners and to the class of 2022. Mr. Samuel Dunlay, our valedictorian, will now address the class of 2022. Hello, and thank you all for coming to this year's graduation ceremony. A special thanks to the family and friends of the graduates who have given their time to help us celebrate four years of achievement and success. Thank you to the entire BG administration, faculty, and staff. I appreciate, and we all appreciate, the investment you've all made to make this community special. First. I really should name a few of the people who have made my BG experience memorable. Miss Robley, you took me through chemistry from start to finish. I learned everything from basic dimensional analysis to the chemical structure of ammonium sulfate. And thanks to you, I now have college credit, so I don't have to remember any of it. <laughs> Mr. Miller. Thank you for your very, very thorough introduction to the principles of physics. I went from struggling with basic kinematic equations to solving complex electrical circuits in the span of one year. 
But most importantly, thank you for making everything in life that follows your class seem just a little bit easier. Mr. Boucher, thank you for making the difficult material in AP Physics as clear as possible. Your class was my most challenging at BG, but you made the classroom environment into something closer to a family dinner table, and that helped ease the pain. Miss Angel, it's clear that you really, really love math. Thank you for translating that passion into useful, practical instruction. And thanks for putting up with them all on me all year long. And Mr. Howe, of course you made it in my speech too. You're about as good at teaching as anyone could be at anything. You're super competent, super dedicated, honest, real, inspiring, and fun. Now, I do hope to keep my hair for as long as I can, but when it does go, I hope to be as aerodynamic as you. <laughs> Dr. Sherwood, Dean Forrester, and Mrs. Warren, you taught me English well over the years, so I apologize in advance for all the sentences I'm about to end in a preposition. I promise it's not a reflection on you. Oscar, thank you for making it a point to know everybody and for brightening all of our birthdays. I have no idea how a person can remember all that you do. You're truly a beacon of positivity in the BG community. Mr. Strinisty, through your guidance and leadership, especially through the challenges of the pandemic, you set an example of what we all aspire to be. Thank you for being far more than just a principal. And also, a special thanks for the people who've truly shaped my BG experience, my friends. I'd name you individually, but I'm afraid I'd leave someone out, and you all know who you are anyway. I see Chris motioning to mention him. Oh no, actually he's saying wrap it up already, Sam. <laughs> Seriously, without all of you, my experience here would have been very different and not nearly as fun. I'd like to say just a few words on the challenge of the pandemic. COVID hit us as sophomores and stuck around through our senior year. It changed the way the community operates in a lot of ways. And sure, some things were a little harder. But sincerely, all of us here appreciate how the administration, faculty, and staff did the very best they could to mitigate the impact of something completely out of their control. No doubt COVID took its toll but not so much that it dampened our experience in any meaningful way. And anyway, learning to adapt to unforeseen events and circumstances isn't such a bad thing, and I think we all did pretty well in that regard. Now certainly, we've learned a lot at BG. In class, we learned math, writing, science, civics, badminton, and plenty more, and presumably, that's all gonna be of value to us at some point, either all the specific details of those topics or more likely, the way we learned how to learn, how to absorb and digest information that seems foreign at first glance, or just how to go at some hard reasoning or analysis and make it, well, a little less hard. All of this is supposed to prepare us for some vocation, give us a foundation for further studies or just put us on the path to being members of an informed society. And that is important, but it's not the most important takeaway from our time here. More enduring will be the set of values we take from BG, for these will be applicable regardless of what comes next, and it's these values on which fulfilling lives are built. So let's examine them. At BG, we learn responsibility. We're responsible to ourselves, our peers, our family, and the teachers and staff of the school. We're responsible for getting our work done, giving our best, or at least a reasonable effort in everything we undertake, supporting our peers when needed or requested, 
upholding a standard of conduct and representing the school in the broader community. Beyond BG, our responsibility will only grow to include the families we create, the businesses we're employed by, and the physical worlds we live in. We're prepared to be responsible. At BG, we learn the importance of work and effort. In the world we'll live in, no achievement of any significance, no new development or invention, and no meaningful progress on any important issue is gonna be easy. If it were, it would have been done already. The truth is that once you've set your objective and your plan, there is simply no substitute for effort, for putting your head down, for grinding your teeth and plowing forward. Surely, BG has at times, actually many times, put more work on our plates than we thought we could handle. But one way or another, we got through it or around it. We're prepared to work hard. At BG, we learn how to be resilient and resourceful in all kinds of challenging situations. In life, things don't always go according to plan. Actually, if the plan has any sort of complexity, they pretty much never do. Even our assassin kill plans didn't go fall according to script. Being able to figure out on the fly how to proceed past a given obstacle, how to handle unforeseen circumstances, and how to deal with inevitable setbacks, and all while working only with the tools and resources we have at our disposal, that is an essential skill and mindset. We're prepared to be resilient and resourceful. At BG, we learn to collaborate. In today's world, nobody really sustains himself. Humans don't live like the animal kingdom, and our society isn't an every man for himself game. Rarely is any notable advancement made by someone acting on his own. Rather, it's groups of people acting in concert who move the needle. Moving past inevitable disagreements and aligning efforts toward a common goal is essential for almost all progress in society, in business, in relationships, and, of course, in spike ball. We're prepared to work together. At BG, we learn the importance of community and citizenship. Each of us was born into a community and society which have allowed us to be who we are and will allow us to live the lives we choose. In turn, we have an obligation to be responsible stewards of our environment, decent and honorable representatives of our local community, and productive members of society. If we care about the institutions and policies that govern our lives, which we should, then we must take an active role in shaping them. We're prepared to be good citizens. At BG, we learn the value of service. Our reason for existing must be bigger and more meaningful than our own personal success. It has to be more about giving than receiving, more about what we can do for others than what others can do for us. Whether something that advances the interests of society, benefits our local community, or helps a single person in need, our mission in life must extend to matters beyond those that concern only ourselves. We're prepared to serve others. At BG, we learn the importance of advocacy. Once we've chosen our cause, whether representing ourselves or others, our ability to marshal all available resources to attack the problem will determine our success. And often, the most effective tool we have is our voice, our ability to get others on board with the fight, to persuade, to build consensus, and even to inspire. And when we hit a tactical dead end, to try a different track. We're prepared to be successful advocates of noble causes. Finally, at BG, we learn perhaps the most important value, the one that puts all the others in perspective, and that's gratitude. 
all of us here today are so very fortunate to live in an era of relative peace and prosperity in a lawful society where we're free to speak, gather, and worship freely and to pursue our dreams as we define them. We thrive in a world given to us by our forebears and very few people who have ever walked the earth have been given so much. Remembering this will go a long way in keeping in perspective whatever challenges lie ahead. We're prepared to be, and always will be, thankful. Going forward, each of us can and will choose what we do with these values. Hopefully, they'll persist in our minds and our hearts, and we'll build our lives around them, consciously or otherwise. But that's up to each of us individually, because each of us has free will to carve out his own untrodden path. In doing so, we will, I believe, lead better and more fulfilling lives because of our experiences here with each other. Looking around this room, I see so many smart, talented, resourceful classmates who I believe care enough to try to do what's good and right, to address big problems, to foster an environment of inclusivity, and to take what we've been given and transform it into something greater. It's a good feeling, a really good feeling. To my classmates and fellow graduates, good luck with whatever you choose to do and with whomever you choose to be. You know, I really like the way Tamara concluded earlier, so I will borrow her technique and say this. If there's one thing I'd want you to take away from my speech today, it's that it was a really good speech. <laughs> Seriously, it's that thanks to BG, we're well prepared to lead meaningful and constructive lives. Thank you all. Thank you, Sam. Well, graduates, this is it. After four years of tests and quizzes, three years of not being freshmen, two years of AP classes and proms, and one year of making sure Mr. Trinity doesn't drop another cookie, Our time at BG has come to an end. From being the only class for which the school has chanted, go home seniors at the pep rally, to being the only class to serve as role models to the rest of the school as we navigated school post pandemic, we truly made history here at BG. Famous street poet and philosopher Drake <laughs> said it best when he claimed, sometimes it's the journey that teaches you a lot about your destination. This could not be more true for us seniors heading off to college, as four years of attending BG has taught us invaluable life lessons and has granted us unique memories that we will cherish for years to come. Thank you to the BG faculty and staff who have been by our side since we were a little freshmen and have molded us into confident, resilient seniors. It is through your precedent and leadership that we now truly know what it means to be a Cardinal. Thank you to all of our families and friends. There is no way any of us could be standing here today if it weren't for your guidance and support. Finally. Thank you to the class of 2022 for the most phenomenal four years. May you continue to leave your mark wherever you go, and always remember, once a cardinal, always a cardinal. Thank you.
Now, Father Thomas will offer the benediction. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. O Lord our God, we are grateful to you for the great benefits and blessings which you have richly bestowed upon us in your compassion and loving kindness. We bless you and give thanks to you, and we ask you to look with favor upon us and upon these graduates who have completed their courses of study. May your Holy Spirit descend upon them and fill them with the spirit of wisdom, understanding, and holiness. And may you bless them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Enlighten them with the light of your divine knowledge and grant them strength and patience that they may prosper in all of their good works for the glory of your holy name and the building up of our communities. Be present, them, be present with them always and grant them many years in health and happiness. For you are our God, mighty in mercy and gracious in strength, and to you we give glory Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and always and forever and ever. Amen. Thank you, Father Thomas, and thank you for your ministry here at Bishop Gurren High School. Congratulations again to our seniors. This can concludes our commencement ceremony. The graduates will process out slowly the faculty will form a receiving line in front of the school. Please take your time. Thank you for joining us in our celebration, and good luck to the class of 2022.